Hello all and welcome. In today's video, we're going to revisit HLG and see what's changed. Do a couple of shots on the A7 IV, so the results should be similar for A7S III. Bring it into Premiere Pro and we'll see what has changed. Now, I'm not going to do a HDR delivery test. I can save that for another time. I'm just using HLG for what most people were using it for, which is a pleasing dynamic range like the Gamma and also a little bit easier to edit colors. That is, if your software was being friendly. So that's what we're gonna test. And yeah, to be honest, since I'm not using it for HDR, I went back to my Cine 2 profile, which is very similar dynamic range. So that's the reason I haven't done many HDR shots lately. But today, we're gonna to change all that. We'll do a couple of tests. We'll bring it into a Premiere Pro, and see how we go. All right, let's do it. Welcome back. Well, the good news first is it is much easier to work in HLG in the new Adobe Premiere Pro. You just simply import your shots and you drag one of them down to the timeline and it automatically makes you, if you look at the sequence it just made, automatically makes you a workspace in Rec 2100 HLG. And you shouldn't have to change much. It gets it from your footage. In my case, it's 4K. I'll just enable the maximum bit depth. And there you have it. We are working in HLG and with no blown out uh, clouds or anything like that. And if you wanted to make that sequence yourself, you just go File, Sequence. Now there's nothing here that says 4K, so that's a bit of a gripe I have with Premiere Pro, but I'll just pick um, a 1080 timeline then and call this Test. And then we just go in here and we'll change it ourselves, let's do it manually. So 3840 was my footage, 2160. It's 4K out of the Sony a7 IV. And we just go here, make it ourselves, make a working color space rec 2100 HLG. And then I enabled maximum bit depth and the rest looks very similar. And let's see if that works when you drag it there. No, not the sequence, the shot. Okay, do these look the same? Yep, excellent. So you can make it yourself. Now it's also very easy to export this HLG timeline out to a HDR movie. So if I just make a shorter version of this, let's um, go to about 10 seconds. And if we go to File Export, there are some really cool presets and they exist in the MXF wrapper or the QuickTime wrapper. And you just select one that says HLG. You can see it's actually popped it back into a friendly HDR, HLG delivery. Now apparently according to Adobe's help, you just leave this there as is. It's already changed this to maximum bit depth and the export color space, it's already chosen Rec 2100 HLG. I'll leave mine at eight bits per channel because I've recorded at 10 bits per channel. I don't think there's any reason to go overkill 16 bits. And that, using these presets here, will automatically render out a HDR image. And you can send that down the line to editors, or you can even upload that straight away to places like YouTube that'll accept HDR content now. But let's just say you had something, so it has to be a HQ, I think, and you just had that selected. It still won't update automatically. You, if so, just come down here, select render at maximum bit depth, then you can override this export color space. Now that, I just noticed when I was trying to do this, won't necessarily work if I didn't choose HQ. So if I chose something like that, 422, then for some reason, uh, the choice of color space is not available. So let's export that and we'll have a look. Okay, if I compare my output on the left here to the original shot and I press Command I, then we can see that the original shot is obviously HLG. But the good news is, if I select my output and hit Command I in QuickTime, that that's also a HDR, HLG shot. So we've made our HDR movie here, we can confirm that. And we can see if I pull in a, a normal standard movie and hit Command I, you can see here under video details, this is not HDR, it's just your standard Rec 709. So that confirms that that indeed works and you can upload your HDR movie straight up onto YouTube if you like. So that's exciting. Okay, and now Rec 709, the moment you've all been waiting for. 
So the steps are the same. Import your footage, and if you drag that into the timeline, it'll make the sequence in HLG, if that's what you shot it in. But you simply just go in here, change your working color space to Rec. 709, and it's gonna go all funky. But here's where you actually then conform, and you can like batch conform, you select it all, and go right click, modify, interpret footage, and select color space override, and override it to Rec. 709. So then if we were to export that, then you can pick your favorite, like H.264, anything like that. And I'll just change the name to Rec. 709. I called the other one HLG, type faster. Then you don't have to change anything else. I mean, you don't get the choice to change uh, color space to HLG because that's now just a normal Rec. 709. For 4K, I like to do two passes at 40. That's pretty much it. So we're almost there. I mean, this is your HLG. We can confirm that is the HDR. And on the left, if I select that, then you can see this is my normal Rec. 709. So we're almost there. And that's the good news. But as you can see, there is color variation and some gamma variation between both the HLG and the Rec. 709, and unfortunately, even in the viewport. So we'll talk about that next and how I approach solving that. All right, let's do it. So if your export looks different to your project window, the way I like to deal with that is I make an adjustment layer and I apply my changes there. And you basically just want to get your export to look exactly like it does in the project window, right? Because that's what you're looking at all the time. You're editing in here. And I like to make this adjustment. Let's just do it now. I like to make an adjustment layer and I only show it at the time of export. I do all my changes here and I don't recommend doing it this way where, oh, by the way, this is an annoying bug in Premiere. If you can't see the export media, then just press in here in the space in here, then try it again. That's what I do when it comes up. So I don't recommend adding any LUTs or anything like, and, and the reason I don't like adding a LUT to my export is it's kind of another variable, another black box. I want to have full control of what I'm seeing. So like I said, let's try to get this export now, which is looking slightly washed out and desaturated. Maybe gamma it down a slight touch as well. Let's do that now, shall we? All right, let's go to Lumetri. I'm in my MacBook, my new MacBook, and it's only got the one window, so this is how I've been working. And we apply our Lumetri. I've got my special saved effects here and then just apply it and it'll show up and if it doesn't there's another bug just have to jiggle that a bit okay here we are we can see the lumetri scopes so i think looking at that let's, let's eyeball it eyeballing it is the way this is the way so it looks like let's go down in gamma just a bit So what I'm going to go with is a tint of 6, is my final numbers. Saturation I'm going to leave at 117 and the gamma is reduced. It's like, like 5 or 10% of one of these little squares there. Let's render that. This is my last time. Okay, remember to turn that off. Now let's open the last attempt and then I'll give up. I mean this sounds very arbitrary, um, but you look at all of the control that you get doing it this way. I don't recommend doing it the LUT again because you'll, you'll download it, you'll export it, and you will still won't be satisfied. So you might as well perfect it now. So that's pretty damn close. Okay, let's turn that back on and have a look at what we did. So once again, we did a tint of six, saturation of 117. And if I just expand this out, there's no scientific way to tell you how much I pulled that down, but you can just see there. Reduce the gamma a little bit. There you go, that's a scientific number, a little bit. Now you only have to do that once. You can actually right click that and save it as a preset. So it seems like a lot of work initially, but it, it isn't really. And it'll give you all the control you need because this problem will keep coming up. It's not just for HLG. Oh, and before I go, I did these two tests. That's XAVCS and this is XAVCHS. I just wanted to see if it was still randomly 
doing its own color space transforms because if you remember from my last video it used to automatically transform this one the XAVC HS it would do its own and then for the H264 which is XAVC S if you remember uh, that's why I made my own transformation LUT using LUT calc just to take that into my own hands but it looks like here that doesn't matter anymore so this is the HLG timeline and it's brought them both in the same. Oh, and just quickly, I just wanted to confirm that the Lumetri scopes are reflecting the color space that we're working in. And yes, it does. And while I'm here, I might as well try something. If I was to convert this uh, back to Rec 709, so then I'd also have to undo the conforming of this interpret footage uh, put it back to X709 here too. Then I wanted to see in the Lumetri scopes if that reflect. Oh, there we go. It is. Right, so this is HLG2 and the max IRE is around 95 plus. And you can see here that's actually been clipped. So that's probably the rims of the clouds there and can't be saved. I just wanted to see if that was the case because I saw the zebras on the camera when I was filming. And HLG3 is back to... Um, 100 max IRE. Uh, if we were to jump into a Lumetri node quickly, um, yeah, I'd just play with the tone a little bit. Might as well fill up the, the whole tonal range, get it to the top. It's clipping there anyway. And then tweak the shot to my liking, adjust shadows, whatever. And that's cool that it does show you that it's definitely in the Rec. 709 color space. All right, that's enough geeking out in Premiere Pro. Okay, one more test. This is also XAVC HS in the 4K. So it's 50, so it's cropped again. But this time I'm in HLG3. Now, according to the manual, the only difference is a slight bump in the dynamic range. And by the way, the lower part of the HLG is normal, consider that standard, but it's just how it deals with brights and most Displays can ignore that, but a HDR display apparently can enable that and you can get super whites and you can see more details in the bright. This also changes the max IRE, the max brightness. So you have to put your zebras on a higher amount, like I think it's 100 for this one. So similar to Cine 2 shooting in this, the experience should be similar. And HLG 2 was around 95. I had to put the zebras on 95. You can check that yourself quickly by pointing the camera to somewhere bright, uh, like a light source. Lock your ISO off, uh, put your zebras on 100 if you have to, and then just dial it back down until zebras appear, and then you know, well, you've hit it, and you know, bump it back up till it disappears, and then back one down, one notch, and then you've found where the max IRE, or one less than the max IRE exists, because then you want to mark that with your zebras. It's a very handy feature. Don't recommend exposing your shot using zebras. Just, I like to monitor the highest parts. Obviously you can do things like monitor skin tones, get a bracket, that is quite handy, but it's a bit surgical and it's less practical for events, which is what I do normally. So yeah, I like to use zebras just to monitor the max IRE. Okay, my hand is shaking because it's heavy. So let's hope the active stave takes care of that. All right, thanks for watching. We're gonna wrap it up. Hopefully I found, hopefully I found, well, you know what, every time I do this, I learn something, but hopefully you found it useful as well. All right, see you on the next vid. Okay, see ya, bye.